Remember that one time Lil Baby called Gunna a rat on stage? It turns out that in order to escape his own Rico troubles, Lil Baby might have been moonlighting as a secret agent for the feds all this time. I mean, for all the praise Thugger gets for his mentorship and all the jokes about Gunna being the one to watch out for, Lil Baby being the snitchy McGrath the whole time is the most insane thing ever. The question on everyone's mind now is, what's really going down in the YSL and 4PF camps? Find out all the details in this video. The current Lil Baby situation. Atlanta has always been the epicenter of hip-hop swagger. It has been a musical melting pot for decades. Outkast kicked things off, setting the stage for a new wave of rap royalty to reign supreme. T.I., Jeezy, and Gucci Mane took the crown in the 2000s, turning the city into a hip-hop powerhouse. Then came the 2010s, a decade that saw Atlanta birth a new breed of rap giants. Migos, Young Thug, and Future emerged, reshaping the sound of rap and dominating the charts. Lil Baby and Gunna joined the ranks, cementing Atlanta's status as the rap capital of the world. But all good things must come to an end, or at least a pause. Migos, once a united force, now seems to be over. Takeoff tragically lost his life. Offset and Quavo are showing very little signs of reuniting. The biggest blow, however, came with Young Thug and Gunna's legal troubles. Thugger sits behind bars, facing Rico charges that allege his YSL record label operated as a gang. Despite these setbacks, Atlanta's rap scene still pulses with life. Future's latest albums with Metro Boomin are doing well amidst the beef with Drake. Lil Yachty keeps the city's name buzzing. However, Lil Baby is struggling to hit the heights of the previous years. Now, speaking of Lil Baby, he was intensely clowned on social media these past few days. In case you are wondering why, news broke that Gunna won't be stepping into the witness stand against Young Thug or his crew. However, guess who might be taking the stand? Lil Baby. We will get into the details later in this video. First, why was Gunna's name removed from the witness list? Judge Ural Glanville ruled to slim down the witness list, which initially resembled a phone book. Yak Gotti's attorneys made this request. They argued that sifting through over over 700 potential witnesses would take eons, or at least three more years in legal lingo. As the YSL trial sails into its fourth month, the courtroom has seen over 40 witnesses take the stand. Some unlucky souls have spent what feels like a lifetime fielding questions from both sides. And just when you thought the drama couldn't get juicier, the prosecution dropped a bomb on Tuesday, April 9th, updating their witness list for the rest of the trial. Surprisingly, Gunna's name was missing from this star-studded list. The YSL artist, who was the first to taste freedom in 2022 ahead of the trial, had already made it clear through his attorney that he wouldn't be singing like a canary or participating in any way, shape, or form. Looks like his stance is as firm as a rock. But Gunna isn't the only big name missing from the list. Lil Wayne and Young Thug's brother Un Funk also got snubbed. Un Funk struck a plea deal back in December 2022, admitting guilt to RICO Act violations and theft. Initially handed a 12-year sentence with two years off for good behavior, his recent gun charge hiccup saw him getting a new sentence of nine years and six months in the slammer. While Gunna, Lil Wayne, and Un Funk are steering clear of the courtroom spotlight. Others like YFN Lucci, Birdman, and Rich Homie Quan are still on the prosecution's hit list. Yet they've been tight-lipped about their participation, leaving us all hanging on the edge of our legal seats. The people on social media have been clowning Lil Baby ever since this announcement was made. They claimed he lost his best collaborator because he thought Gunna was a rat. Last December, Lil Baby turned up the heat by taking a shot at Gunna. During one of his concerts, a video captured Lil Baby's blunt reaction when their past collaboration, Drip Too Hard, started playing. With a shake of his head, Lil Baby exclaimed, the rats, turn this shit off. Clearly not in the mood to vibe to their joint track. The song in question, Drip Too Hard, was a hit collaboration from their 2018 joint project, Drip Harder. However, Lil Baby's recent comments hint at underlying tension, referencing Gunna's involvement in the YSL Rico case. Gunna opted for an Alford plea in December 2022, a move that secured his release from jail, but left a sour note in their musical partnership. I don't think Baby realized that the Alford plea doesn't necessarily mean Gunna snitched on Thugger. The Alford plea is a legal concept that allows a defendant to plead guilty to a crime while still maintaining their innocence. By entering an Alford plea, the defendant acknowledges that the prosecution has enough evidence to likely secure a conviction, but they do not admit to committing the crime. One key aspect of an Alford plea is that the defendant does not admit guilt, but acknowledges that the evidence against them is strong enough to likely result in a conviction if the case were to go 
to trial. This plea allows the defendant to accept a plea deal or receive a lesser sentence without having to admit to something they claim they did not do. It's important to note that an offered plea does not necessarily mean that the person snitched or provided information to the authorities. It simply means that they are accepting the legal consequences of their situation while maintaining their innocence. For example, imagine a person is accused of a robbery based on security camera footage showing someone who looks like them committing the crime. The person knows that the evidence against them is strong, but they maintain that they are innocent. In this case, the person might choose to enter an offered plea to avoid the risk of a harsher sentence if found guilty at trial, even though they did not actually commit the robbery. What seemed like a feud between Gunna and Baby started with a song snippet, where Lil Baby appeared to be throwing some not-so-subtle shade at Gunna, while also throwing a protective arm around Young Thug. Some is taking pleas, I know Slime ain't happy, he rapped, setting the stage for a showdown. Not one to take things lying down, Gunna fired back in his track Bread and Butter, fresh out of jail and ready to lay down some rhymes. Peeping shit, I'm seeing niggas fall back, he spat, hinting at betrayal and backstabbing. He didn't hold back, accusing someone of switching sides, but just when fans were ready to declare a full-blown rap feud, Gunna threw a curveball. He stepped up to the mic, not to call out Lil Baby, but to set the record straight. That's Cap, he declared, dismissing the speculation. I'm just letting the world hear my story. Now for the twist you were not expecting. While Baby and many others called Gunna a rat, it's actually the other way around. Is Lil Baby is working with the feds? In hip-hop, loyalty is everything. But what happens when rumors swirl that one of the biggest names in the game might be working with the feds? I don't know if you remember, but back in 2022, the Fulton County District Attorney hinted at more high-profile RICO cases hitting Atlanta. This bombshell came on the heels of the arrest of young thug Gunna and a slew of YSL associates on racketeering charges. As the city braced for more legal fireworks, speculation mounted that Lil Baby and his 4PF crew could be next in the DA's crosshairs. But Lil Baby isn't one to stay silent. Silent. Addressing the rumors on Twitter, he announced plans to start an investment group for black millionaires, a move that drew praise and excitement from fans. However, not everyone was so quick to forget the whispers of legal trouble. One Twitter user in particular couldn't resist poking the bear, warning Lil Baby to watch out for the rumored RICO charges. But Lil Baby's response was straight fire. He replied saying, only God can judge me. As the dust settled, rumors swirled that the reason the RICO charges never materialized was because Lil Baby had cooperated with the authorities. Now, what could authorities have on him to make him snitch on Thugger. Let's look at his criminal history. Lil Baby was not always the superstar rapper with a string of hits to his name. His story begins in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia. It was here, in the rugged corners of his neighborhood, that Lil Baby's first brush with the law would come at the tender age of 12. The day was like any other for a group of kids looking for mischief, but what started as child's play turned into a serious matter. Lil Baby and his friends, fueled by a mix of curiosity and bravado, set their sights on a house that stood silent in their community. Lil Baby and his companions were intending to rob the home. Despite his youth, the gravity of the situation was not lost on him. Arrested for burglary, Lil Baby found himself facing the stark reality of juvenile detention. The 10 days that followed in the juvenile center were a departure from the freedom of the streets. It was a period of reflection, a forced pause in the life of a boy who was just beginning to understand the consequences of his actions. Released from the juvenile detention center, Lil Baby stepped back into the streets of Atlanta with a reputation that had been altered by his recent confinement. The whispers of his name now carried the weight of someone who had been on the wrong side of the law, and it wasn't long before the streets reclaimed him. The lessons of the detention center seemed distant as he resumed his place in the neighborhood, less secretive about his activities, and more entrenched in the life he knew. Despite the shadow of his first arrest, Lil Baby's intellect remained sharp. He returned to school, navigating the halls with the same ease as he did the streets. His academic performance was a beacon of potential, hinting at a different path that could be taken. Yet the allure of the streets was a powerful force, and the balance between his two worlds was precarious. Lil Baby's pattern of getting arrested and then released, starting with a failed burglary at 12, was escalating. The information about Lil Baby's arrest is sealed because he was a minor at the time. However, in some early interviews, he mentioned that the arrests were mainly for drugs and guns. He had been lucky to avoid serious consequences so far, but his luck was running out. Eventually, a judge, tired of his repeated offenses, sentenced him to probation. Lil Baby was given probation to help him avoid serious trouble and a chance to change his life's direction. He did well for a while, following the court's rules and staying out of trouble. However, at 18, he violated his probation and was sent back to jail. This violation could have led to serious prison time, so he quickly hired a lawyer. His first lawyer got him a deal for two years in prison, but Lil Baby wanted a better outcome. He fired his first lawyer and hired a new one who got him a deal to attend a six-month program instead of going to prison. Lil Baby agreed to the deal and joined the program a few days later. However, he soon learned that the program was supposed to last a year, not six months, as he had been told. This made him feel deceived, but he decided to 
give the program a chance. Shortly after, Lil Baby got into a fight with another participant, resulting in him being expelled from the program and receiving a two-year prison sentence. Surprisingly, prison life was not too difficult for Lil Baby, as he had cousins facing life sentences in the same facility. Having family there likely provided support, and the fact that his sentence was the shortest among the inmates made him grateful that he would eventually be released, unlike others who may never leave prison. On July 1st, 2016, Lil Baby was released from prison and went back to live with his mother in Atlanta. When he returned, he noticed that many of his friends from the streets, like Marlo and Young Thug, had started rapping and were becoming popular in the music industry. Even though he thought it was cool, Lil Baby didn't initially want to rap. He planned to go back to his old life of hustling on the streets. However, when his friends in the music industry, including P and Coach K from Quality Control and Young Thug, heard about his plans, they encouraged him to try rapping instead. Lil Baby started to consider their advice but didn't take action until Young Thug paid for his first studio session. That one session changed everything for Lil Baby and set him on the path to a successful career in music. However, it wasn't the end of his legal issues. On February 7, 2019, around 6 p.m., Lil Baby was driving his orange Corvette when a Georgia State trooper saw him change lanes without signaling. Lil Baby then sped up and drove recklessly, passing other vehicles while pedestrians were walking nearby. When the trooper tried to pull him over, Lil Baby tried to avoid being stopped by accelerating and changing lanes. However, the trooper eventually pulled Lil Baby over and arrested him for failing to signal, reckless driving, and attempting to flee from the police. Lil Baby was taken to Fulton County Jail and later released after posting bail. There haven't been any updates about the arrest in the media, but it's likely that Lil Baby will have to pay a fine and possibly attend traffic school. The thing is, when you consider all these minor legal issues, it's normal to assume that none of it is worth him being an informant for the feds. But what if the authorities actually had something bigger on him? Especially when you consider the fact that Lil Baby was really involved in the streets before his stardom. It's the same for Thugger too. Some of the crimes he's being charged with were committed before he broke into the limelight. Speaking of Thug, there's a lot going on right now with his trial. Let's look at the key events from his arrest to his current status. If you're struggling to wrap your head around the whole thing, or if you're struggling with keeping up with the trial, you will need this. The YSL case and trial. On May 9, 2022, the city of Atlanta witnessed a shift in its cultural landscape. On this day, Young Thug found himself at the center of a serious legal issue. He was arrested and charged with murder, armed robbery, and participation in criminal street gang activity, to name a few. The indictment portrayed Young Thug as the leader, or King Slime, of the YSL group, which prosecutors said was a cover for a violent criminal organization. The accusations covered almost 10 years, starting in 2012, and showed a pattern of alleged criminal actions. Merely two days after Young Thug's arrest, his neighborhood was disrupted by police sirens and officers arriving at his house. This wasn't just a routine visit. It was a crucial moment in the legal case against him. During the raid, the police found a lot of evidence that led to new charges against Thugger. They discovered illegal guns and a large amount of drugs meant for sale. These new charges added seven more serious crimes to his record. It suggested that his house wasn't just a home, but also a place where illegal activities were happening. At this point, prosecutors started portraying Young Thug not as an entertainer, but as a king Pin, a mastermind of criminal operations that extended beyond the recording studio and into the streets of Atlanta. On June 2nd, 2022, Young Thug appeared before the judge for a bail hearing. The defense wanted him released, but the prosecution argued against it. They described him as the most dangerous member of YSL, suggesting he could flee or harm witnesses if released. On the other side, the defense painted a different portrait. They spoke of Young Thug as a father, a philanthropist, and a pillar of the Atlanta community. They argued that his status as a public figure and his deep ties to the city made him likely to flee. They pleaded for the court to consider his role as a provider for his family and his contributions to society. However, bail was denied. The court's ruling was a blow to Young Thug's team and his supporters, who had hoped to see him released. The reason was simple. The risk of tampering with witnesses and the seriousness of the charges were more important than the arguments for bail. On August 10, 2022, a new indictment brought more serious charges against Young Thug in Fulton County Superior Court. This indictment added six new felony charges to his existing legal troubles. The charges accused him of being involved involved in criminal street gang activity, breaking Georgia's drug laws, owning a machine gun, and having a firearm during a felony. At this point, the charges against Young Thug became even more serious. Despite the mounting pressure, Thug's defense remained unshaken. His attorney, Brian Steele, stood firm in the face of the new indictment, maintaining his client's innocence. Mr. Williams has committed absolutely no crimes, Steele said. On January 18, 2023, during a routine hearing for Young Thug's RICO trial, an alleged drug exchange happened. Young Thug was accused of being involved 
involved in the exchange. Reports say his co-defendant, Kaylee F. Adams, was seen passing drugs to Young Thug inside the courthouse. However, in a turn of events, Young Thug seemed to be spared from immediate repercussions from this particular incident. The focus shifted to Adams, who was found in possession of more drugs by deputies following the alleged exchange. He was immediately hit with new charges, while Young Thug remained off the hook for this specific accusation. During a hearing in May 2023, Young Thug fell ill and had to go to the hospital. This moment brought a human touch to the legal proceedings, reminding everyone of the toll such trials can take. It showed the defense's concerns about the tough conditions Young Thug faced in jail, including early mornings and lack of sleep, which they said contributed to his exhaustion. On November 9, 2023, a crucial moment happened in the YSL RICO trial. The courtroom turned into a battleground over whether Young Thug's song lyrics could be used as evidence. The prosecution wanted to use the lyrics to show his involvement in criminal behavior. The defense strongly disagreed. They said the lyrics were protected by the First Amendment as artistic expression. They argued that using the lyrics in court would set a dangerous precedent by mixing creative freedom with criminal accusations. They believed the lyrics were just part of Young Thug's artistic image, not a real admission of wrongdoing. However, Judge Ural Glanville made a ruling that would have a big impact on the music and legal worlds. He decided that Young Thug's lyrics couldn't be protected by the First Amendment in this case. This meant that 17 sets of his lyrics could be used as evidence to try to link his music to the alleged criminal activities. The lyrics themselves weren't the focus of the prosecution. Instead, they were being used to try to prove other crimes the artist might have been involved in. Glanville clarified this by saying, they're not prosecuting your clients because of the songs they wrote. They're using the songs to prove other things your clients may have been involved in. This ruling was a setback for the defense and raised concerns among artists about how their work might be used against them in legal cases. Young Thug's trial took an unexpected turn on November 28, 2023. His attorney, Brian Steele, pulled off a linguistic maneuver that left everyone in the courtroom wide-eyed. In a bold move, Steele redefined the very essence of Thug. He claimed that it wasn't about violence or crime, but was an acronym for truly humble under God. Truly humble under God. That's what Thug means. Steele didn't stop there. He went on to redefine pushing P as pushing positivity, further distancing his client from the allegations of gang-related activity. The defense also highlighted that YSL was named after the Yves Saint Laurent fashion designer. They suggested a connection to high fashion rather than a criminal enterprise. The defense's new definition of thug went viral, sparking discussions online and among legal experts. On December 10th, 2023, there was a violent incident at the Fulton County Jail. Shannon Stilwell, one of the co-defendants, was attacked and stabbed multiple times in his cell. He suffered injuries to his back, stomach, and shoulder. This incident raised concerns about safety and security in the jail. The assailant, identified as inmate Willie Brown, admitted to the stabbing in a chilling confession. According to Brown, the confrontation began when Stillwell brandished a knife. In a desperate struggle, Brown claimed to have wrested the weapon from Stillwell and used it against him in the act of self-defense. The trial narrative took a significant turn on January 3rd, 2024, when Trontavia Stevens, known within the YSL circle as Tick and Slug, took the witness stand. Stevens provided testimony that could potentially solidify the prosecution's case against Young Thug. Stevens talked about how YSL started. He, along with Young Thug and Walter Murphy, were the founding members as he testified. This was important because it directly connected Young Thug to the group that the prosecution claimed was a front for a criminal organization. Stevens' testimony could have made things worse for Young Thug's defense. However, Stevens had trouble remembering details, which made his testimony less clear. His hesitation and selective memory made his account less reliable, giving the defense a chance to question his credibility. The next day, Stevens changed his story in a surprising way. He said that YSL was primarily a music label, not a criminal organization. He described YSL as a positive change from the past, saying it started as a music label before anything else. Stevens portrayed YSL as a group that focused on making music instead of being involved in crime. On January 11, 2024, something unusual happened in court. Young Thug's song, Lifestyle, played in the courtroom during a trial. The defense used the song to show that Young Thug's music is art and not a reflection of his real life. They pointed out that in the music video, Young Thug didn't wear any gang-related colors, even though others did. This was meant to prove that his lyrics were not about real criminal activities. The YSL Rico trial took a surprising turn on February 16, 2024. Nicole Fagan, a lawyer who had represented someone in the case, was arrested. She was charged with participating in gang activity and tampering with evidence. The accusation suggested that she had told someone to get rid of
the murder weapon, which would show she was involved in the crime she was defending against. Her arrest was shocking, happening in the middle of the legal system she worked in. It added a new twist to the trial of Young Thug and the YSL group, raising questions about the extent of the gang's influence. Fagan's arrest didn't just affect her personally, but it also impacted the trial. Her former client, Tanquarius Mender, who she was representing, had his case separated from Young Thug's. This meant they would be tried separately, adding another unexpected turn to a trial that was already full of surprises. On February 20th, 2024, there was a tense moment in the courtroom when the prosecution presented a key piece of evidence, the 911 call from September 11th, 2013. The call was made by an anonymous woman and was about a shooting incident involving a friend. In the call, the woman named Young Thug as the alleged shooter. The 911 call wasn't just a retelling of events. It painted Young Thug as deeply involved in violent crimes. The defense questioned the call's credibility, noting the anonymous caller and lack of evidence. But the call's impact was strong, leaving jurors with a haunting impression. Playing the call was a strategic move by the prosecution to strengthen their case. On March 19, 2024, a surprising moment occurred during the YSL RICO trial. A witness named Adrian Bean, who was supposed to testify against Young Thug about his alleged gang ties, shocked the courtroom. While under oath, Bean admitted to being under the influence of drugs, casting doubt on the reliability of his testimony. Can I get a water or something? I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to go to sleep on y'all now, Bean stated. Judge Glanville, presiding over the trial, was faced with a decision. In an act of judicial discretion, he granted Bean's request for water, allowing him to continue his testimony. On April 4th, 2024, a significant development occurred in the trial. Thug's defense team made a bold move by filing a motion to remove Fulton County Assistant District Attorney Adrian Love from the case. The defense argued that Love had overstepped her role as a prosecutor by acting like a witness. They pointed to her questioning style, which often included leading statements that the defense believed were improper and biased. However, Judge Ural Glanville denied the motion, affirming Love's role in the trial and endorsing her methods as lawful. Now that we've reviewed the detailed timeline of Thugger and the YSL RICO trial, it's hard to say whether things are looking good for Thug. The evidence against him seems overwhelming, suggesting the trial will likely continue for some time. Regarding Lil Baby, we can only hope that if he is indeed involved, this information comes to light soon.